Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to you, Scott. Good morning, Happy John. Valentine's Day. How Happy are you? Valentine's Day. Um, yes. and, and as a post on my Facebook uh, wall reminded me this morning, um, also the anniversary of um, Captain Cook being uh, killed by angry Native people in Hawaii. Um, so anti-imperialist struggle as well. Captain Cook, who was Captain Cook? Remind us. Uh, he was, uh, ooh, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, he was an English, uh, one of these guys who called themselves explorers, but were actually, you know, um, imperialist agents trying to subjugate uh, the indigenous people of, um, uh, in this case, the Hawaiian Islands. Well, he had a lot of a company in that regard. Mm -hmm. We're revisiting a number of those issues with regard to the founding of the United States and the American Revolution and colonialism and slavery with a lot of articles on the uh, 1619 uh, project. We, um, um, Norman Markowitz, our esteemed comrade professor at Rutgers University has just published a new article um, at uh, cpusa.org. And uh, have you read it? It's quite a- quite It is, it's quite good. Um, in fact, I was, I was looking this morning through uh, trying to find some um, pieces from, from Henry Winston, one of the great uh, leaders of the party and theorists of, of black liberation and class struggle. Um, and I found a, a paragraph that reminded me of um, the importance of the 1619 project and um, kind of our, our approach to it. Um, Winston is, he's addressing uh, the idea of sort of black capitalism and a, a separate kind of economy uh, mm. for um, black Americans. And he writes, black Americans have a first and equal claim on the total economy of the country which they helped build with 400 years of slave and near slave labor for billions of jobs, housing, medical care, education, et cetera. They want the total economy turned around to meet the people's needs instead of operating for the wars and the profits of a handful of corporate monopolists. So talking about the way that, that um, black liberation and the struggle for the, the basic needs of the working class and the people or the way they dovetail with one another. Well, now, when you talk about the uh, total economy, um, is the argumentation there that um, African Americans uh, have within the capitalist framework uh, a right to the total e economy as well? Um, because arguably, um, that is a position that one could take. What do you think? Uh, I don't think that's what uh, Winston is, or I think that's why he points out a first and equal claim um, in the sense that uh, the labor of enslaved Africans was uh, one of the, 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 or maybe the primary um, motor of the creation of capitalist wealth in the United States, um, but also, so first in that sense, but also uh, equal in the sense that um, it, it's not a claim to all the fruits of capitalism, but a claim to um, a, an economy beyond capitalism that would, uh, that would enable those. those yeah, I see what you're saying, but yeah. isn't it also the case that we are fighting and struggling within the framework of capitalism? Absolutely. As long as, so long as you're functioning within the capitalist framework, I mean, Black people has, have as much right to be- and, Oh yes, oh sorry, I misunderstood what you were asking. Yes, and e, and e, a, a full claim to, to equality mm. within capitalism as well, a, an equal claim to the fruits of, of capitalist production, capitalist society, certainly. It's not, it's not exclusively projected into some, some future uh, and system. So therefore we support the right of, of um, uh, the uh, black businesses to, mm -hmm. I mean, so long as you're having business, yeah. you know, um, we have as much right to yeah. um, a, a, a piece of the pie uh, as, as others. It's part of the, what we call the anti-monopoly demands mm -hmm. of, of uh, the people, uh, African yeah. and, and Americans, women, that, yeah. Latinos, you know, and so on and uh, yeah. so forth. 
Yes, as you've pointed out in articles before, um, the demand for full and unconditional equality now and down the road. Yes. Um, on the other hand, our emphasis is not on business, but on African-American workers. 99% of our people are working class people. And that's the distinction I think that, that Henry Winston is drawing. Uh, yeah. Whereas some were projecting, uh, or were putting forth the, the idea of black capitalism, of you know, investing in and creating black owned businesses as, as a path to the, um, to the, the liberation of the African American people more broadly, um, Winston sees the, the the driving force of that process as a mass unity in the struggle against um, monopoly capital. Well, that's a very interesting uh, uh, question because uh, it reminds me of a. I made a post on Facebook the other day with regard to pointing to a drop in union membership among amongst African Americans because we have the highest density of uh, union membership of any people in the country. And there's been a, a drop largely uh, due to a uh, drop in uh, employment in the public sector. Mm -hmm. As you know, the public sector is by far the largest uh, yeah. employer of, uh, of uh, people of color. Of and, we should, and we should specify that it's not just that, you know, people have decided to desert the public sector and, and move on to greener pastures. This is part and parcel of the, the assault by the extreme right on, Absolutely. on, on the public Absolutely. sector, on the democratic and public ownership of. Yes. And so what happened is that a uh, good friend of mine, actually of my goddaughter's son, um, commented on my, and he said on my post, and he said, well, Joe, black people, uh, unions ain't nothing but a plantation anyway. And what we need are black owned businesses. You know, we ain't gotta, we shouldn't worry about other people hiring us, we should hire ourselves. And so I replied to him and I said, well, if that's the case, and I imagine that those workers employed in those businesses will need unions as well. And then someone else, commented on the post and this person said, well, unions are the largest civil rights organizations in the country. And so I read that and I said, hmm, that's an interesting formulation. And in fact, the unions uh, do make that argument. But here you have to understand the particulars of the situation because this young man is a skilled worker and he comes from a, a family of very skilled workers. His dad is a very highly skilled worker, electrician, carpenter, I mean, extremely skilled. And they live in the deep, not in the deep south, but they live in the Maryland, Virginia area. And I'm so, I'm sure that he was responding to the problems in the uh, skilled trades in the South, you know, and the discrimination that African Americans face um, in some of those uh, unions, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so he's responding to that. And so you have to have a sense of, of uh, who is saying what and where, and then how to, you just can't make blanket statements. You have to uh, understand the uniqueness of each particular uh, case. So in any event, um, these are well, some- We'll be publishing uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, excerpts, edited excerpts from Henry Winston's book, Strategy for a Black Agenda, um, which is currently kind of hard to find. It's out of print. Um, I remember- uh, As part of our uh, discussion around, so yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great book. It's got a lot of, um, I mean, my experience reading it is, it's almost like it's really like reading Lenin in a certain sense, since it it's really engaged in a lot of the debates that were going on in uh, the left wing um, press and and intellectual and political circles at the time. So it's sometimes for those of us who weren't participating, a little uh, hard to follow. But but there's some there's some excellent stuff in there. 
I had the opportunity to read that book when I was in high school. And I remember we went to the uh, World Youth Festival in Berlin. I believe it was in 1973. And Winston's book was a big, big hit, uh, you know, particularly in uh, and among uh, uh, people from the Southern Africa um, and um, the diaspora who were reading uh, Winnie's book and debating uh, a, a lot of the ideas that were put uh, forward there. Um, so yes, we're looking, we're looking forward uh, to that. Well, it's been a interesting week in Washington. Scott, um, your president uh, <laughs> has uh, been going after the judiciary so much so that yeah. even William Barr is now uh, kind of striking. William down. Barr of all people, <laughs> the clunky in chief. I mean, what, yeah. what's, what's going on? He's protesting. He says, "Boss man, you're making my job harder." <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't need someone, somebody, uh, a constant background commentary. Uh, so that that's again, it, it, it illustrates the degree to which the the, the extent of the, the disarray within the, within the ruling class and even within uh, the right wing. Mm. Um, and I mean, we shouldn't get confident, we shouldn't, I mean, um, the capitalist class uh, is in all of its sections very accomplished at dealing with and living with and profiting from disarray. So we can't get comfortable, but, but we also should not see, um, you know, anything as, static or fixed or inevitable or, or anything like that. Now there was the, uh, speaking of things that are not static or fixed or inevitable, uh, there was the New Hampshire primary last uh, week and there were some surprises there. Um, um, following up on the Iowa caucuses, yeah. um, Mr. Sanders won uh, by uh, a, a slim margin, but he won, followed very uh, closely by Mayor Pete. Uh, and uh, Mr. Biden has dropped uh, precipitously in the uh, standing. I think he came in fourth place, is it? Your homeboy? Uh, fourth, fourth or fifth, yes. What happened to your homeboy? <laughs> uh, for some reason, uh, people don't seem to like him. Um, I mean, and, and we, you know, as certainly was the case with Hillary Clinton, we, we cannot fail to take into account uh, the concerted campaign of, of the right wing. Um, so I, I don't think it was accidental in the impeachment process that um, the, the, the constant effort to portray Biden as corrupt, uh, uh, as you know, uh, fostering corruption as the one who should really be investigated, um, which was the same as, as what the Trump campaign said about Hillary, lock her up, lock her up. Uh, right, right, they were going after him and his son, you know, during uh, the impeachment. And I'm not, I'm not, hmm. I'm not expressing any opinion as to his guilt or innocence, I, you know, whatever, um, but people's uh, opinions and approaches um, are, to a degree shaped by, you know, the propaganda emanating from, from the White House. Uh, but they haven't found any evidence of wrongdoing. I mean, uh, at least so far, and, and uh, it's all based I mean, if you look on closely at it, closely enough, charges so far, isn't it? Um, if you look closely enough at any uh, piece of, of regular above board capitalist business, mm. it's sleazy as hell. Uh, and um, I, I imagine that's what we're dealing with. Uh, but so I don't know. I don't. I don't think Joe Biden is especially well uh, corrupt or criminal. I mean, what's that? Trump's middle name is corruption. Yes. As, as a now, going as back a to the to the to the uh, New Hampshire primaries, it's significant that a socialist. Uh, Democratic Socialist and Mr. Sanders and a gay candidate and Mayor Pete were the top two 
uh, vote getters, don't you think that that's yeah. about in, in both of the both of the contests that are, are are taken as like the you know the heralds of of what's going to happen in the campaign. Um, uh, it, it I think it's very significant, um, and it it really raises the question of unity uh, kind of in a different way because a lot of the approaches in the mainstream media around uh, the Sanders campaign have been based on this idea that Bernie's not, Bernie has no chance to win, so we have to tell his supporters to get ready to vote for somebody else, right? Uh, will Sanders supporters um, support another candidate to beat Trump? Uh, Bernie supporters have to, you know, be willing to whatever. So now we're seeing at least the, the, the possibility kind of a flipping of the tables. Well, all of these people who seem so dedicated to the idea that Bernie can't win, will they be able to, to vote for him? Uh, to well, now there's another side to this, which is that if you take the percentages gotten by Pete Buttigieg and Amy uh, Klobuchar, did I pronounce her name right? Her last uh, name? I, I don't know if it's Klobuchar or Klobuchar. In any uh, event, they represent a larger percentage of the vote that, 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 that Sanders and Elizabeth Warren got. So this, is, is it the case that the uh, so-called centrist are uh, uh, having majority support and that the left is a minority in terms of the electorate? What I, does that look like to you? Um, I, I don't think that's the case, although you could certainly on the basis of those numbers um, talk about a, a surge for the, the centrists, um, although classifying uh, Buttigieg has, I don't think it's quite that easy. Um, but the, the real question, well, in, in terms of, of centrists, I think everything is in flux until Bloomberg actually enters the, the primaries. Um, is that going to, um, you know, how is that going to impact the, the overall breakdown of and speaking of the center, Bloomberg drop has he he dropped in already. Scott, what are you talking about? And he's dropped a half a billion dollars. But he hasn't been on a ballot anywhere yet. He's not on the ballot until he's he's on the ballot. He will be. He's yeah. got big bucks, and he's and he's and he's using them. And Biden's dropped twenty two percent in the African American. Uh, really? I hadn't know that's that's extremely and, significant. And uh, what's his name? Bloomberg has risen by 12%. Re what? Uh, yes. Bloomberg and, Mayor Stop and Frisk is. And he did an ad. Bloomberg did an ad with Obama, with Obama saying nice things to him about him. And the drop in Biden support and the rise in Bloomberg support uh, happened right around the same time that this ad has been airing. And so um, Bloomberg is making it appear that, uh, that he's Obama's man yeah. or that Obama is his man, however you want to look at it. And therefore um, he's uh, banking on um, his bankroll to yeah, place him at the top of the list. No, no, and, and it's it's a real danger. Um, and the I think I, I find the idea that you can simply skip, you know, the first four primaries uh, and and go straight to where all the votes are. I mean, I find it profoundly undemocratic and and arrogant. Um, like it's it, it shows the extent to which the electoral college and and that kind of undemocratic thinking. Has has corrupted our political process, both the money and the just the disdain for. You know, but is it the real process. question? What is the revolutionary position of the Communist Party with respect to the election, and um, and uh, how are we going to uh, get the word out? And in that regard, the Political Action Commission has drafted a statement. Uh, on the party's position with respect to the 2020 election that will uh, be on the website soon. So everybody who wants to know where do we stand, you'll be able to find out 
uh, film. Right now, I can tell you that we're focusing on the issues, yep. fighting for unity. We're welcoming the, uh, in this socialist moment, the candidacies of uh, Sanders. We recognize the progressive candidacies of Warren and the other candidates. I agree with you. It's not so simple to call some of these others moderates, you know, because the positions that they are taking today were left-wing positions four years ago, you yeah. know, for example, on, on health care. Now all of a sudden they want to categorize them and put them in a, a, a box. I like it that they're not giving in to the red baiting of Trump. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's, a, that's a really important issue. Well, and I think- So just one, one quick thing. Um, when we talk sure. about uh, uh, focusing on the issues, what are, what are the issues that we see? Um, the, the big uh, issues on which uh, broad unity can be based in this election? Well, I think one big issue that people aren't talking about is the military budget. You got to cut that goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. Tax the rich. Huh? You got to tax the rich. You got to tax the rich. You know, I think we need universal uh, health care, yep. whether, you know, single payer, Medicare uh, for all. We need um, uh, affirmative action. You know, with uh, compensatory measures for African Americans, women, Latino, Asians, you know, I think that we need decent housing. We need uh, to abolish the uh, student debt. You know, it's not collectible and it's not payable. So just let's just, just cancel it, yep. you know, and make college free, you know. Yeah. While we're at it, uh, we got to deal with these issues of, of, of gun violence, you know, um, all across the country. There are mass killings and there are gang killings and there are all, just all kinds of killings. And we got to uh, address that. Opioid <laughs> crisis, the health crisis has to be addressed as uh, well. And how are the candidates talking about immigration? Is that, I know that, that Julian Castro um, had. Um, uh, immigration and and the environment, I think, were his among his biggest topics. Um, are there have they uh, sort of developed ideas around um, an overhaul of the immigration system, a path to citizenship, uh, things like that? That's an important issue, and perhaps we should have a, a show on just uh, that topic. Mr. Yang has dropped out of the race, which is unfortunate because he has been raising the issue of a universal basic income. Uh, for everybody as an important uh, measure. And so I hope that that point is not sidelined. But we yeah, should talk we about that at some point because um, the way he raised it, um, part of it involved um, getting rid of, of uh, welfare benefits in exchange for the universal basic income. And to my mind, it has to be UBI plus healthcare plus um, welfare benefits plus, you know, anyway. We can talk about that later. Great. Well, thank everybody for showing up. Uh, join us next week. Don't forget to host a watch party. Even if the show is over, you can still host a watch party by clicking on the host a watch party uh, uh, button. Make sure you check out our website at cpusa.org. Uh, We've got a number of great new articles on the page on Black History Month. There's a new Marxist IQ. Um, and uh, a number of other uh, pieces, including, as I said, Norman's Markowitz's new piece on replying to the 1619 Project. Well, have a great week, Scott. Happy Valentine's Day to you and your family. Uh, and uh, everybody else, take care. We'll talk Enjoy. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend.